And welcome back to our special coverage here at 4 o'clock with the coronavirus pandemic. We are looking to experts for answers. And that's why we asked Portland State University biologist Ken Stedman to join us today. He's done extensive research uh, with viruses and all that. Thank you so much for joining us today, Ken. Um, first off, though, I'm wondering how worried should we really be? I know a lot of people are really worried about this. So. I think, and I love what you're talking about here in terms of, you know, facts, not fear. Mm -hmm. My standard line is be prepared, not scared. Mm. And it's thinking about things in a bigger picture. Definitely most people, and at this point 80%, and I think potentially higher than that, of people have really pretty minor symptoms. Now, that's definitely the case for you and me. Uh, older right. people who are at higher risk is definitely more of an issue, which is why we're seeing all of these closures right now mm -hmm. is to prevent that kind of thing moving forward. But just thinking about it, you know, one out of five chance sounds bad, but four out of five chance actually to me sounds reasonably good. And as I say, I think that the actual numbers are probably going to end up being higher than 80% of people who have few to no symptoms. It is so important to keep perspective though on that. Exactly. Um, so what do we know about the transmission of the virus? So in terms of transmission, I heard you talking earlier and it's exactly right. It's one an aerosol transmission and actually really droplets. Mm -hmm. And so that's part of the reason for staying far away from whoever you're actually talking to, hopefully not coughing on. Mm -hmm. um, and really what's happening there is the droplets when they come out, they're gonna drop. Again, gravity's our friend in this case. Yeah. So droplets are gonna fall, they're gonna fall closer to whoever is producing them. And so that's the reason to stay far away from people. I, I wanna jump in on that though, because there seems to be some confusion. People think, well, oh, the virus is gonna live for hours on surfaces. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where people get concerned. So that's a, a great question. And the answer is we really don't know in terms of being infected, infecting mm -hmm. people. We do know that the virus is still active, right. but that's all stuff which is done on Petri plates and Petri sure. dishes. And so actual infection, it's clear that people do get infected by being coughed on by this directly inhaling the aerosol droplets. How much transfer is actually happening by touching and getting it from surfaces? Yeah, don't lick the floor, okay. but <laughs> Good to know. still. I'll um, try not to do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you know, we We've been hearing from a lot of you know health experts state officials and we've heard the term flattening the curve so mm -hmm. for the average person out there what does that really mean so flattening the curve is getting back to, again to what you're discussing earlier you know making sure that the hospitals have enough capacity to be able to deal with the extra numbers of people who are gonna need those ventilators, gonna need those hospital beds and so the idea is instead of having a really rapid rise and then lots of people at one time, which could completely blow up the situation, which seems to be what is happening in Italy, mm -hmm. is to try and spread out and you know, just have transmission be slower. Transmission is gonna happen. We know that's gonna happen. But the longer it takes for transmission, fewer people are gonna be yeah. sick at the same time. The total number might be about the same, mm -hmm. but it'll be fewer at the same time. So that's critical in terms of the resources that we can't really build up. Well, not overwhelming the ERs right. and the hospitals and the healthcare exactly. system is critical. Yeah. Um, I know this one might be tough to answer, but I'm wondering myself too, um, You know, with flu season, we see it ramp up in the fall and the winter, ramp down in the spring, early summer, that sort of timing. Um, with the temperature, do you foresee that happening with this virus? Is it too soon to even know if in two months from now, if it'll be dying down? That's a really good question. The easy answer is we don't know. Mm -hmm. um, however, at least what people think about flu, it seems to have to do with the moisture in the air and also just people are a lot closer to each other. In summer, you're outside. Right. In winter, you're inside. And so there's going to be more transmission that happens there. So we'll see. No one really has a good handle on it now for this particular virus. Hopefully, it'll go down a bit, but I wouldn't count on it. Okay, and uh, I know we have a couple of viewer questions, but really quickly, uh, I've heard a lot of people wondering, should I go out? Should I touch this? Should I touch that? Should I touch that apple at the grocery store? Should people be really that freaked out about it? Um, I would say no. Mm. And basically, I think what I like to think about is, what have I changed in my life over the last couple of weeks, you know, month or so? I wash my hands a lot more, yeah. but I still go to work. I still yeah. you know, you have to play with life. my kids. You know, I'm still living my life. I'm going to go and see my 77-year-old mother next mm -hmm. week in LA. I'm mm -hmm. getting on a plane. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see someone who's in a situation where it could be higher risk, but no one in my family is sick. We've decided with discussions with her, which I probably wouldn't have had beforehand, right. now that we're both happy with it, and so we're going to see her. Well, um, Ken Stedman with Portland State, a biologist and a, an expert in viruses. We will definitely have to have you back because we could ask you questions all day. And I could um, talk all day. I know, I know. so uh, we appreciate your time though, Ken. Okay. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you.